Welcome back everyone. So in this tutorial we will create a hexagonal based star pattern uh, similar to the one you see here. Uh, the pattern can be controlled in a parametric way so basically you can kind of open and close this pattern as desired using slider. All right uh, so let's get started. Okay so we will start by navigating to a lunch box and then we're going to grab the hexagonal component Let's assign a surface and let us hide the surface in Rhino. Now let's create a slider that goes from 1 to 15. So we'll copy that. Now we'll connect that to our hexagonal component. And now we'll set my slider. And I will create another slider to connect to the T parameter, which in this case I'm using 0.3. Okay, so we have our hexagonal tessellation. Next, uh, let's try to get um, access to each of the individual segments. Uh, so we're going to connect the cells to the explode command. And here we will see if we use the panel, we will see that we have these individual segments organized in a list format. However, some of the lists are four, some of the lists are five, and the vast majority of the lists are actually six. And these six refer to, to the perfect hexagonal units here. And those are actually the one that we need to work with, and we need to remove all other um, polygons. To do that, we can go to sets and then to a prone command. And this will clean up our data. So we need to set the value of the N0 parameter to 6. And this is basically um, telling Grasshopper that all lists with, um, uh, with less than 6 item, you can take them out. Okay. So if we hide this here, and if we hide the other one, uh, we can see that we only kept the perfect hexagons. Okay, so next we need to find the center for our new hexagons and to do that we can use the explode command. We're going to connect that here and I'm going to use the list item component and if I connect that here I will basically get an access to a single point. If you connect this here you'll see you have two points. If you use the list command you will have only one point. This will help us to find the average, okay? Uh, but before we connect this to here, we need to, as you see here, now each individual point in, an, in a kind of an, in, in its own list. What we need to do, we kind of, we need to group uh, these points in one list. And to do that, we're gonna use path mapper. And I will arrange my data manually by, by kind of merging all the point in one list. If I connect that, you'll find, you'll see that I have my new centers. So now if we create a curve that is based on this center and these points here, you will see that we kind of established a link between this center and this point, which we need, actually need to do. So now we need to connect a point from this segment to a point on this segment and this will help us to create our star pattern. Okay, so the way I'm going to create a point on this segment here is basically by using a point on curve command. It's if you go to the curve and then point on curve and then if I'm going to connect these segments here you will be able to see that I have a point that I actually can control. I'm going to go exactly to the middle because I don't need to change that location as of now. Okay, so now we need to create a point on this curve and the way I'm going to create this point is using a sphere command. And I'm going to use the center as my uh, base for the sphere and, and I'm going to create a slider that goes from 0.1 to 1.56 I connect that here 
you'll see I'll be able to control the size of the sphere. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an intersection. So I go to intersection, and I'm going to create an intersection between this curve over here and this sphere. If I hide this sphere, you see now I have a point I can control using the sphere. The reason I use sphere because later on we can actually change the shape um, of the hosting surface for this tessellation and the sphere will make sure there is always an intersection between this curve and the sphere we generated in any kind of direction. All right, um, so now what we need to do is to connect the point. We need to connect this point over here, so I go to curve. And if I connect the point from this intersection to a point over here, and you see, and I have kind of the first part of the star. Now we still need to connect this one to this one here. So let us start by examining our data here. Uh, so first we need to kind of to group um, um, all of the points into one list. And to do that, I'm going to use the, the path mapper command, and I will have a direct access to my uh, I, I'm going to combine multiple items into one list. list. So in this case, what I will do, I just re remove one. So if I look again here, you'll see that uh, the data here is kind of grouped. So now I can use shift list component. And if we create another panel and connect to this panel, you will see I kind of shifted my list. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to use the graft command again. And let me create a copy of this line first. Let me remo move this line and have it over here. And I'm going to create a copy. And if I connect this into here, you see I created kind of the second part of my star. Now, to control the size of this star, I only need to change the size of the sphere. Right. So now we need to kind of create a surface. So uh, I will use this point and to the center. So let's create a curve that goes from, uh, from this point to the center. Okay. But again, we need to kind of graft our result, select the data, the center's data, this, and then we're going to graft and then we can connect back to here. Another point. So now we need to match our uh, data trees. You see we have uh, five paths in here and we have only four in here. So we need to fix that. Um, and the way into doing that, we can just use the craft component and then we can use the roll surfaces. And I will combine this one here with this one here. Okay, this will create my star. Now you can uh, create another world surfaces for this one here, um, uh, but in my case, what I have here is to connect, is basically that I am connecting this curve over here to this line over here. So this will cover the entire area. Okay. All right, so if we zoom out, and if we look at our pattern, Again, we can just go here and change the size of the sphere, and this will control the size of the pattern. All right, so now what I want to do is to add kind of a little bit of depth uh, to these stars, make them a little bit more kind of three-dimensional. Uh, so I will move this point in this direction, and to do that I need to find the normal so let's go over here and let us use the patch surface command. 
So if we connect this over here, so I created a surface that exactly fit within the hexagonal cells. Let's try to find the normal of these surfaces. If we go to surface analysis and we use surface closest point, and we use the evaluate surface over here, and then we're going to use this surfaces here. So we're going to use this surface here, and then we're going to need to find the area as well. And, and then we're going to connect that over here. And we're going to find the normal by connecting to evaluate surface and use this as our UV. Okay. So now I have my normals. But they are kind of not unified, not in particular direction. Um, let's just start, let's actually examine that. So if we use create a curve. And I will use the start point of my curve in this way. And my direction is going to be the normal. And then I need I can add a value to this. It goes from uh, point 0.1 to 2. And if we connect this here, we'll be able to see that some of these lines goes in this direction and the other sum goes in that direction. So to fix this, we can we go to utilities, if we go to surface, utility, and we have this command called the flip, and we need to unhide, and swap, and we're going to use this, these surfaces over here, and connect, and use this surface as a reference. And Moving on, everything that goes from this needs to change to this one. All of our normals kind of move in this direction. Let's a little bit organize things over here. Let me hide things in here. I will um, uh, explode this line over here, and then I will use list item to get an access to these vertices, and I will change the integer into one. So I basically select the outer point over here. So if we just connect this point over here to this line component, you will see we kind of shifted the entire star pattern into this one and we can control the depth of the star using this length component. So now if I change the shape of this surface over here, you will see that I will be able to shift or shape shift these stars in a uniformed way. So let us examine the result over here. And we can bake the result and move it over here. Uh, so that's uh, it for this tutorial. Um, I really hope you find it useful. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, leave it in the comment section below, and I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Uh, thank you again, and I will see you in the next one.